Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with Mystic Gen Mara, a small town mystic in the middle of Idaho. And tonight's video is going to be kind of a book review but also some exercises if you're interested in practicing a different way to enhance your meditation if you're working with a meditation space. And that is through the use of mudras. Now you've heard of the asana practice with yoga, the different poses that you do. And those poses can trigger different states of uh, awareness. They can uh, bring up different energies. The same thing when you're working with Tai Chi or Qigong, where the movements are bringing forward this different energy, but it's done in a motion state. What I didn't realize until recently, and I was actually researching something else when I ran across this, is that the hand position and the placement of your hands during your meditation can enhance or slow down the energy within your body. And I thought that was really interesting, and so I kind of buried myself in that for a while, as I'm prone to do when I get interested in something. And I came across two specific books, which I'll link in the description. One of them is strictly, let me get my bookmark here because I had all this stuff marked and then I <laughs> moved it and now I'm not in the right spot. So here we go. The first book that I ran across was Mudras of India. Make sure the reflection's not on it. And this book is fascinating because this one in particular talks about physical or just hand movements, stationary. That's the word I was looking for. Stationary hand positions. But there's also sections, and you know by the top corner of the page, go to one that I'm not using, um, this symbol here up in the corner, this one right there, there it is, means motion. So this is something that you can be moving with. It's a almost a dance I think is how they reference it and then we have these ones which are for meditation in place so like if you're sitting down being quiet those are those types of positions there's some that work with each hand is in a different position um, and that is makes it a little more interesting when you're trying to get your hands set up into those positions before you uh, go into your meditation space. Let me see if I can find one of the two-handed ones. Do, 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 do. Like I said, I was not doing my best today. Um, oh, that's a dance. But there are dance ones as well. For example, this one, it's the Dharma Chakra Mudra, which is the wheel of Dharma, is the uh, term applied to it. and in the picture here, get my book up so I can see it, you can see that there's two different positions and you're specifically holding your hands. It's a, it's a stationary meditation, so you put your hands in this position as you're going into your meditation space. And the basic is it's a joint hand gesture. Uh, common to yoga, where you use your hands to express movements and energy, but with this one, it's a way of triggering or ex uh, representing the wheel of karma moving. It's the wheel of life. It's the turning of the wheel. So this, even though it's a stationary hand gesture, it's Im symbolizing movement of your energy, your karmic energy, your dharmic energy, which is your belief system in this lifetime. Um, and so you want to be in a comfortable position with any of these because especially the seated ones and it says hold the mudra in front of your heart center that's the other thing when you're doing these mudras they are specific there are some that will have you holding your hands in front of your third eye there are some that will be at your crown there's some that will be you know at your root area down below they're all specific to different areas of your body because that will also affect the energy flow and you'll hold this particular one in front of your heart. You're breathing naturally and relaxing your neck, shoulders, and chest. And again, with most of this, you're paying attention to the rhythm of your breathing. 
there's you can also add um, I just lost mantras so you can be chanting while you're holding the mudra and a lot of them with and I like this book for this they tell you a minimum time to hold it to get the best benefit for the Dharma Chakra Mudra it is five minutes minimum and as you grow working with that energy it can actually take it up to 45 and they give you a max out time because generally after that you're not getting any benefit out of it anymore and then it goes through what it does physically and spiritually for you for example the benefit of this one the Dharma Chakra Mudra is it's opening the chest facilitating deeper breath benefits the heart lungs balances inter and inner and outer aspects of your life your spiritual world as well as your physical world it also is a window through which we can see and touch the inherent unity behind the veil of the illusion of duality that we live in so these are kind of fascinating in that respect the one right across the page from it we'll just go ahead and check that out it's a moving one and it's Danu Mudra, Danu Mudra. And it means the in English direct translation and that's the other thing they actually give you direct linguistic translations and that means bow that's what the mudra is it's the bow mudra and it is a single-handed gesture and generally you're kind of using it in a dance tradition so you can tie this into if you do um, belly dancing or if you do any form of Middle Eastern dance you can add these in for purpose within the dance itself in the traditional India dance and I looked a lot of these up um, just when I was first studying this you watch hands their hand gestures through the dance are so precise they are so structured and once you start to understand especially with this book what those hand movements mean the dance becomes a story without words it is fascinating to see that uh, I'd love to be able to see it in person in an Indian temple at some point but at the moment I'm still stuck in starting to melt snowbound Idaho um, <laughs> but it, it symbolizes Shiva as a hunter so it's a ma it has a masculine quality but it also represents Shakti as the huntress so you have this duality depending on where it's at in the dance and uh, which hand you're using as well and the bow is generally female energy but the arrows which is the term ba uh, bana or bana is masculine so a bow and arrow which was a dance you can use this in would be the unification of masculine and feminine towards a purpose so this book is really fascinating because they've done a lot of research trying to understand and they're showing you they actually go through and have like I said the pictures are very descriptive and then they go through technique for this one it's um, Vargaya Vargaya Mudra and they tell you how to do it you join the tips of the thumbs and index fingers of each hand place the hands lightly on the thighs palms facing up so as you're doing these you can actually see the picture and then they describe where your hands are what they're supposed to be doing and then it goes through how to apply it how to hold how long to hold it and most of them will tell you five minutes is your minimum and in reality if you're doing meditation work you want five minutes of actual meditation time where you're able to focus on whichever mudra you're choosing to work with like I said that particular what book the mudras of India those are traditional those are used in temples and in sacred dance so you get both the moving aspect of it which is a little bit more like Tai Chi Qi Gong things like that the martial arts type stuff but it's done in dance and flow and it does not so much a militant doesn't have a military application so to speak um, but you also have the meditational part so you learn what your the basic we always use this one as our basic um, meditation suppose but you can use the middle finger it means something completely different you use the ring finger it's completely different you use the pinky finger it's completely different mixing the two have different energies and qualities it's a balancing act they talk about the different symbols of what the fingers mean and what the positions are and some of 
the mudras in there will actually instead of having it finger to tip it'll be finger to side thumb to side a finger it'll be finger to middle of a joint the bottom the middle however um, there's other ones where you're bringing your fingers to the base of your palm and they have to hit certain lines on the palm as well so it's a very broad area but again if you're working in, in stillness meditation the mudras are enhancing the other book that I have found to be helpful it's not as uh, what do I call it traditional I guess we'll go with as the mudras of India and it's mudras yoga in your hands and this one has some newer stuff that they've developed over time and yes you can develop your own mudras as you understand in palmistry what the different fingers are the different joints the mounds on the, the palm those are basics that you kind of need to know to develop your own I do not have that knowledge so I have not developed my own <laughs> but this one is a little bit different where the other one actually has pictures of hands so you can see what it looks like in you know finger point pose this one does it in drawing form which still works but it's just I don't know I like the picture version better and they are a little bit more um, more focused on the healing parts of things there is some there's a lot of spiritual tied into it but the a lot of the stuff in these ones is focused towards health and healing like the one I just showed you it's the asthma mudra and in case of an acute asthma attack you first do your bronchial mudra which is the one before this for four to six minutes you know use your inhaler or whatever but then use these mudras as well to help trigger your body's responses that's the key everything in the body for health and healing I'm not a medical doctor this is just what my research has shown comes from allowing the body to do the work setting yourself up for success is using all tools available to you this is another tool you can add to your toolkit basically so you'll hold that the bronchial mudra for four to six minutes then you'll use the asthma mudra until your breathing returns to a normal state the bronchial mudra would open up your bronchioles working in addition to your you know the inhalers and stuff then this one is going to help you settle into that more positive he, uh, breathing pattern and long-term treatments you'd want to use the two of them according to what they say um, every single day minimum five minutes each so you're building that strength in your bronchioles and releasing the tension of the asthma they tell you times when it's really important to do it and it's like cold weather um, don't be in a hurry Tend, tend toward a lighter diet so it's not as much heavy food instead of eating red meat you're eating white meat um, chicken things like that fish avoiding any form of milk they really they give you a lot of advice in these books in this book in particular about the medical side of the mudra as well they also give you herbal remedies to tie into it like for this one they talk about whorehound and black cumin which is kind of interesting um, they also give you the option and I, I appreciate this but I also like to do my own affirmations so that's <laughs> that's where I will take their notes and I will do my own thing um, they tell you what to visual like uh, how to visualize with this which is beneficial you you're visualizing wide expanses the ocean sky with clouds mountains with you standing on the peak you're basically viewing expansive places if you can do stars standing on the moon do that and you're doing this across the board to help open yourself up and when you have this open visualization you inhale that visualization you bring it into your lungs so that your lungs expand to match that as you exhale you allow the distance to leave but leave you expanded inside so you're doing this push-pull but it's basically helping you grow as it's happening they also give you affirmations that you can say to yourself as you're doing the visualizations as you're holding the poses and I won't go into all that but uh, there are they also kinda do some yoga pose stuff in here as well so it's a little bit more um, 
It's more tied to yoga than the other ones. The other one is tied to sacred dance and meditation. This one is meditation through yoga, but also sitting meditation. They talk about this one. It's called the um, Bodhi Mudra. It's fluid mudra, so this is a water-based one. And again, they're showing you the different fingers that you're using with this. So uh, it look like that one's a pinky finger one, but there's positions for your other two fingers like these two fingers need to be in line your index and your middle need to be in line with your ring finger sticking out and that's kind of how that pose works they talk about what it means they talk about the herbal stuff to go with it again giving you visualizations and affirmations um there's the shakti mudra which is in honor of shakti the goddess of life energy so it's a female energy mudra there's a shiva mudra in here as well um uh, they are really and they even give you half or uh, body positions as well which aren't really mudras they're more of asanas but they talk about a lot of that is in here helping your body prepare for meditation and both books to me there's a several other ones out there these were the two that i personally was led to because they're the ones i apparently needed at the time but they're worth looking into if you want to expand your meditation practice. A lot of the times we fall into habits and patterns with our meditations, which is fine if it still is functional. But if it becomes, it's a chore, or you, f you plateau because we will do that. Any spiritual pra practice will go through these periods where everything's great, you're alive, you're hearing the angels, your intuition's waking up, your third eye's, you know, tingling and carrying on, your chakras are balanced, but then you flatline. You get to this point and you just flat. And it's not that you're not still doing the thing, but maybe it needs a little boost. It Maybe it needs a little shift. Sometimes you'll use mudras, because when I started studying this, I was really obsessive about trying a whole bunch of them. I don't know why I do this to myself. And it was great, <laughs> but then you start finding yourself being drawn to specific ones, and then you stick with those uh, for a significant period of time. There was one point where I did one exact gesture for almost three solid months. I'd try the other ones, and I'd come back from my meditation, and my hands have already switched back to this other position. So sometimes your body will find the one that it needs and it will just make the decision for you. <laughs> and that's you know usually a good way to find out where you're at as far as your uh, meditation needs. But it's things like that if you're looking just to kind of give yourself a little boost of enhancement with the mudras. Um, like I said, they're pretty fascinating. The mudras from India is a lot more interesting to me personally because you get to have movement with it. So you get into a moving meditation, but you're also telling stories. And there's a lot of information in that book about them, about what the uh, hand gestures mean, how you're supposed to use them, because there are some that you put your hands in a certain pose, but you're moving the hand oh, and the forearm with your body as you're doing it. So you're developing not just the hand gestures, you're putting it into a practice within a story, within a dance which is, like I said, fascinating to me. But even if you're just using it for the spiritual aspects of it, there are different ones for different health conditions. Again, even they'll tell you we're not medical people, this is traditionally used for these purposes. Because pressure points in your hands, like acupuncture and acupressure, are very real in the Eastern medical system. Sorry about that. Um, and so this is a way to tap into that healing energy. It works with the meridian lines of your body or the, um, it's not prana lines, there's another name for them in, in the Hindu belief. But it works with all of those different energy fields. It helps you settle in. There's some of them that help you tap into the masculine energy. There's some that'll help tap into the feminine energy. There's some that tap into both, bringing you into balance. There's different elements. Um, and I think it's in one of these two books, I can't remember, but there's one of them that talks about several different planetary energies you can work with using these different meditational practices. And if you're working with your galactic um, guardians, your galactic council, the newer guides that are coming in for us right now, uh, there are ways to do that using these different planetary energies as well. There's, I think there's a moon one and a stellar one. 
So there's different ways to tap into this different energy fields as you're doing them. So uh, like I said, I'll link these books in the description below. If you're interested, check those out. They are definitely worth doing, especially if you've been at meditation for a while, even if it's only 10 minutes a day. Something like this can just kind of give it a little oomph, or if you're looking for something specific um, health-wise or spiritual-wise, these can give you a little bit more of a directed focus, bringing your body into your meditation more so than just breathing and putting yourself into your head and it's taking off. This helps connect the two in a lot better state because we're here in the physical and our bodies are kind of the tools we need to be here. So meditation's great. It brings you inside. It helps you understand yourself. These are tools to help you focus and pinpoint the parts that might need just a little tweaking, a little adjustment, and a little uplifting. So like I said, check those out. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like. Um, please click the subscribe button if you're new here and leave your comments below. I am curious to hear anything that you guys have to say. Questions, comments, even criticisms, as long as we're respectful, that's all I can ask for because I think the world could use a little bit more respect right now. Uh, with that, I will talk to you guys in a future video. Have a great day.